three, uh, one. Welcome to 13 Minutes, a show. I'm Paul Goon, and this week I'm in a Zoom chat with Washington, D.C.'s Tired All the Time. What's up, guys? I, I, I'm happy to be here. I hope to match yeah. your energy. Yeah, suddenly I'm like, shit, I just started drinking some coffee. And all right, all right. It hasn't yeah, kicked in all right. Yeah, yeah, let's get going. <laughs> Good morning. What kind of music do you guys make? We make uh, wants- economically oriented bear pop. <laughs> yeah, we've... Uh, not- that, that's. I guess we're running, <laughs> running with that. Might as well. No, we're not running with that. Uh, we used to. <laughs> we called out ourselves there now. Ed we, has. We call- a, yeah, Ed has a serious answer. Go for it. Anybody? I mean, we we called it Doom Pop for a while, kind of as a joke, and uh, now it seems to fit. It. I don't know. It's hard to pin down uh, what we do genre wise. That sounds like a really pretentious. You know, we're really. We've really transcended genres. Um, <laughs> yeah, that sounds even more pretentious. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I mean, if I keep running my mouth for a second, um, I think what we're doing now that we're a trio and it's synth bass and drums, I think doom pop is kind of accurate because uh, Mike uh, does his um, kind of synth pop thing and then Ed. I are more like a doom band rhythm section. That's at least at least tonally. And we've done some we, I think we've done some stuff that's just sort of a fusion of they're basically pop songs with sort of uh doom metal tone and production. Yeah. I mean I don't really think that we ever um set out to make any particular type of music. So more of the experiences have been us making and then someone trying to assign like a label to it. Yep. Yeah. I generally somewhere around the uh the like neighborhood of pop um uh try to do different stuff timbre wise like a, you, we we are a rock and roll band. Uh <laughs> Yeah. We're like a pop band that when they listen to the pop they listen to. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the real, the, the, the thing we were talking about earlier was like one of our uh uh, uh kind of visions for for this would be like an ideal opener you know just eccentric enough that it's like okay well you're not ready for prime time and stuff but <laughs> but you know you know like uh but 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 there to kind of like you know it's like okay it's listenable you know like we're not we don't have someone like doing like a noise set before or you know like a like a country bluegrass show yeah that is the most elaborate answer i could have ever like I never would have expected all of that. <laughs> that is Usually, awesome. Yeah. Usually what are, like, sorry, what? You know, it's black metal or it's garage pop. Or it's, so from a booking standpoint, it's like whenever I request to play with someone, I always kind of have to like make up the genre essentially. It's like something that's in the proximity of what we're trying to get on with. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever you so it's, are, it's, we are. It's Mel. And if you tell someone something and they actually check the tracks out, they're likely to kind of see it in that filter, you know? Like yeah. if we say we're a pop band, they're like, oh, okay, I got it. It's a pop band. I see that. Yeah, we're like a rush shock is- test for music. Yeah. Or like that that wine kind tasting of. scene in French Kiss. <laughs> Shout out. Shout out, Kevin Klein. <laughs> What are your guys' current positions at the tired all the time office in Washington D.C.? Um, According to Bank, leave him, yeah, leave him chief executive officer. Gave myself a, a promotion with the last release. Right, I think I'm still head of R and D. Right. Uh, yeah, I'd have to look. We did some restructuring recently, so. Mike is uh, yeah the word chart changed yeah. a little. Uh, my, I think yeah, Mike is chief operating officer. No, I think I'm lead executive strategist. Um, but you know, I wear a lot of different hats. Okay, we're kind of like a family here. 
Yeah. yeah we've got kind of mid-sized also, startup. Also, like, where... there, there's been some restructuring now and, like, tired all times progressing into, like, the post-pandemic uh, formation era. Um, so now it's a more uh, ambiguously structured group within the realm of hierarchy. Yeah, yeah. We're definitely, we're looking at kind of a, a sort of more horizontal planning. Um, uh, definitely want to look at, uh, uh, you know, yeah, post-structural kind of uh, work arrangements. My girlfriend made some really good tikka masala for dinner last night, and I was eating it for lunch today, and it's making me burp so much, and I think it's so funny. It was really good. It's like some Indian. So it's good. Worth it. I love tikka. It's worth it. Oh, it was worth it. When did you guys start jamming together? You guys are down a member, huh? Are you looking for a new fourth? How long have you been a band? Um... I mean, I've been, yeah, go ahead, Ed. No, I mean, I've known Mike since probably like the mid 2000s. Um, but this group, yeah, I think we've been playing together maybe since 2016, but not really out actively until 2017. Well, I think, no, I, I started playing with you guys, I think, in 2015, and then we're not even going to agree on the history here. Uh, that, we, yeah. we were playing out in 2016. <laughs> Oh. Yeah, yeah. Um, we uh, switched to a trio um, pretty much just before uh, 2020. I want to say like in 2019, we were starting to write as a trio. Um, uh, you know, things left uh, very amicably, but we're really comfortable with our sound right now. Um, I think uh, uh, it's, it's definitely allowed us to kind of focus things. So we're not exactly looking for uh, like a fourth right now. I think uh, with uh, with how we kind of write songs, um, like either Brian or I will sit down and focus like, all right, wh who's doing kind of the mid range? Who's filling out like where a guitar would sort of traditional, because, um, you know, like a, we've got a pretty good sample -y, uh, synthesizer that can do like pretty solid low end. And obviously like with bass, you can be really flexible with that, you know, you get you know, very crunchy or, you know, super. Yeah, people seem to not realize we don't have a guitar now. You don't need one. Yeah. Yeah. My, you know, Mike has a lot of, uh, you, you put enough fuzz on the bass and enough gain on the synth and it just kind of makes a good guitar in the middle somewhere. Yeah. The, uh, the one thing I will say is um, it's always a challenge to do like any kind of stage presence with like a keyboard. I, I, <laughs> I, I try my best, but like there is something inherently like less energetic about like standing in front of a like a console, like no matter how animated Does you get. Roland make a guitar I mean, kind of like, thing now. I'm sure they do. Yeah, oh, yeah. Team, well, no, they do. But that, is real. Yeah. yeah, well, no, but see, then you got your uh your like I play a lot of keyboard parts that are either two-handed or like i need to be like manipulating uh stuff whereas like with the keytar it's like you you just got you also like, need the, the white thing. sport so if i was doing like only do that yeah yeah the, yeah we, we 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 do like white scrubs and stuff with like uh kind of floral patterns obviously i do think that this is a that, this that's a little bit that's, of that's out, mike because that mike Patton does it with like two uh folding tables <laughs> Yeah, I know, but I'm not, that, and I'm not going to pretend I am. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, like uh, I, 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 I try to bring a bring like a good amount of energy live, but you know, within within the restrictions we have. Yeah, yeah. I feel like we we weren't uh, anywhere close to the original question. No, a, I, yeah. I like the way you guys are answering this, and also when I ask that question, I actually terribly mashed two questions together on purpose to see if I could get the answer I wanted without having to wait longer <laughs> and ask two questions and it worked and you guys gave me what I wanted it's brilliant I am like a master manipulator that's terrible this is um, like MK. yeah <laughs> I made you do what I wanted what 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 type of diagnosis would that uh lean itself towards Mike um, mass mass, manipulator. So no yeah. diagnosis. Like you can be a manipulative person, and it's not like pathological. Like uh, <laughs> in a Freudian sense, like everybody manipulates. 
we, we all yeah we all do it in, like in like a basic way yeah no like it's like all right i'm saying something because i want to elicit some sort of behavior from you but that could be in like a pro-social that was, sense yeah that like was I, it. Could, I it's like I, yeah, yeah i yeah yeah but uh yeah typically when you talk about like a, in a pathological sense you're looking at uh border Borderline personality disorder or antisocial personality disorder. Mike, but that, Mike is a uh, mental health like professional a... for anybody who didn't know or <laughs> hasn't caught on. But, but those have like a bunch <laughs> of other caveats and, and, and symptoms. Yeah, like you can manipulate people without having that shit. Very true. Is this on video now that Ed's hair is unleashed? Unleashed. <laughs> Do you guys think I mean, that you got speaking... it? Nice. Sorry, Ed. I'm sorry. Talk about your hair. That's yeah, it. Go nice. for it. Getting it. Just bring it back up. Speaking ahead, of medical conditions, um, is being tired all the time related to some sort of medical condition that maybe you guys need to get checked out or already have? Uh, we actually by Mike. We 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 found out after the fact that it's actually associated with uh, chronic fatigue syndrome. So I think we'd have a problem if we were trying to go for the domain uh, tired all the time because I think there's already uh, www dot more than tired all the time, which actually it doesn't have anything to do with chronic fatigue syndrome. That's something with like narcolepsy. Yeah, I mean, like yeah, tired all the time. Like uh, uh, at least in my neck of the woods, like the first thing we look at is um, is major depressive disorder. Um, and- of course, like another symptom that could be just like chronic insomnia. Um, in terms, in terms of like, uh, if you're looking at the DSM, like one of the big like rule outs you want to look at is um, um, COPD. Uh, so like, someone's not using their sleep, uh, their CPAP machine and shit. They're not getting enough rest. Like they're they're not getting like any you know real good sleep, or um, uh, definitely something's like thrown off like their thyroid shit. But after that, then yeah, you get into uh, you get into just anything that has like a major mood disorder. So uh, I mean, most of what I wind up seeing is schizoaffective disorder. But yeah, uh, uh, we are more interested in the sociogenic uh, form of tired all the time. As what are the things within uh, uh, people's daily lives and and broader structures within society that make people tired all the time? And you know. That's 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 kind of more the angle I think we're approaching things from uh, uh, lyrically. Yeah, I mean the name also is just uh, it serves a bunch of different roles, but it's it's relatable for most people. It's the only band name I've ever been in. Whenever I tell people it, they're like, "Oh, that I should be I should be a keyboardist." Like, got one of those. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's the only band I've ever been in where I tell people the name and they're not like, "Huh? Can, yeah. we, can you say that again?" Or uh, that they actually say they like it. I don't think I've ever had a, in a band where I tell them the name and they they don't go, okay. I, I think if we continue on, we'll have an album where we capitalize on it. We just give everyone an instrument that sounds like a kindergarten, like music school uh, performance, you know? <laughs> yeah no we could do that yeah we're gonna do we're gonna do self-care workshops at uh at local shows oh. and stuff we're gonna we're gonna bring in therapy animals um uh we're not gonna talk about your salary or like your hours or anything like that but we're, like we're talking pizza party every friday okay we're gonna get we're gonna get the cast of hamilton to do zoom calls with you <laughs> just like everything uh but but increasing your pay uh, it's only going to be the background performers, though. It's, 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 yeah, yeah. Be a stage yeah. Obviously, I mean, I, and yeah, we don't want you to be tired all the time, but, you know, like, it's, uh, you got to look at the bottom line sometimes. <laughs> all right, Paul. What else you got? Next question. Who does the artwork and branding with all the professional business themes? I mean, I realize maybe what it's inspired by is your guys' actual jobs and lifestyles. Um, who's making it up? Who's putting it out there? Is it you guys? One of you guys? All of you guys? Uh, it's always been kind of a collaborative effort. The the whole um, aesthetic. It stemmed a lot from uh, when we were working with uh, 918 
uh, the previous member of Tired All the Time. Uh, but a lot of it's just kind of like compounding jokes on top of each other. Yeah, and there, there's so much free uh, corporate marketing, like images, videos. It's just a goal. It's an untapped gold mine. <clears throat> Um, well, and like the name, it is, it's, it's digestible and it's almost immediately relatable. Um, you can, you like, I mind. think people have like a, yeah, they, they have a, like a sixth sense for just something that's highly like focus group driven or like, um, uh, or stock photos. Like you can kind of tell very quickly, uh, the, the specific uncanny quality of it. And so it does make things a uh, distinctive, I think, uh, uh, Ed through fiber like uh, has has uncovered the secret to how to make a shell corporation. So uh, so you might yeah you might want to check out the tired all the time headquarters. Uh, it is a PO box in Delaware. Uh, okay okay. <laughs> yeah. If I ever started a Kickstarter or something like that, you know I've lost my shit. Yeah <laughs> yeah. The next Theranos. <laughs> oh my god i saw a fucking trailer yeah. they're doing a movie yeah, about fucking great. thanos now and it'd be really cool if the movie itself was like that uh that like food fight movie where it in itself was also another theme like like getting <laughs> people to buy into shit like that'd be yeah. that'd be very even if the movie yeah. sucked that'd be very conceptually rich movies do suck these days that is true maybe the one yeah Pushed to the top, but there are some good ones out there. Is it, is it yeah, no, I've seen <laughs> some, I've seen some great movies. I've seen some good movies There's, lately, yeah. but they're all older. I feel like I don't think I've seen seen as many I've, I've, good new movies as I've seen as many good old movies. I've, you know, I've been I don't on know big 90s lately. Movie. It's like <clears throat> they're awesome, but it's also depressing when you compare it to like the quality of <laughs> movies today. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Just for a fact, but I was wondering if kind of the impact of streaming has kind of opened up the um, market for like the lower to like, like mid budget movie. I remember uh, John Waters was complaining probably back in the late 2000s, early 2010s about how you can't make kind of like a mid budget movie anymore. Mm hmm. You know, he's like, if you're not making it for like a hundred million dollars, it's like, or you're making it for a uh, complete bones budget, like no studio wants to touch it. So now you've got Netflix and all these different um, streaming services that are kind of kicking out just the content. Um, I guess there's probably a mix of just like bottom of the barrel projects that come out of that that are kind of lazy, and there's probably other ones where it's like ambitious filmmakers that are making stuff on a lower budget. Yeah. Well, like, uh, um, uh, A24, like, even when, like, you know, it's like one of the A24 stinkers, and it's just like, okay, yeah, oh, it's, it's very moody, got it. Um, but, like, even then, like, it's always going to be something interesting, at least. It's, it's not going to have, uh, uh, that kind of, well, you want to talk like tired all the time aesthetics, like that, that Marvel Disney kind of sheen where, you know, like uh, like everything everything just feels very like safe and 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 consequence free and uh yeah like so so yeah you you can find movies being made today like uh I'm trying to remember the last good one I saw but I'm like completely blanking on it. See that's the. I feel like you just undercut. Your I know own. I know. Oh well, okay, all right, so all right. Like, oh, there's some good movies being made. I'll come up with one if I. Okay. Um. Uh. uh God. Uh, God, it was forever ago now, but uh, uh, just a few years back, Annihilation I thought was excellent. Yeah. Um, uh, genuinely uh, interesting philosophical perspective on trauma and suffering, like approaching like your emotional state as like a uh, uh, as as from like a phenomenological perspective uh, um, was was really cool. And obviously, a big callback to Stalker, which was I mean that movie's a shit, but that's from the seventies. Um, what else? Uh, a pig arrive did we all see pig, pig. oh yeah pig. Good. yeah pig was great uh fucking mandy mandy uh very recent film but like utterly yeah just just fucking fucking great i like that back 
in the day when uh he was just he was like what the fuck did you make me watch basically that kind of reaction like i thought he he'd be some people you're like well maybe you know is this guy too normie to handle this or you know how's this going to go over but you know the guy was a, a you know pretty good friend at work but he was just like what the fuck was that and i watched that with another friend and it's like i don't know you, you have to be in a certain headspace i guess with that you have to be big when you're watching it but like you got you got to turn off your left brain yeah which is yeah. uh what else uh first uh, that was a great movie that came out like only a couple of years ago um yeah, just kind of like update on Taxi Driver. I haven't seen that one. I do love. I did. Oh re- yeah, no, that, one's, watch, that one's fucking. I great. rewatched Taxi Driver a few months ago. De- definitely check out First Reformed. But yeah, see there, there. I proved my point. There are good movies still. Well, it's Paul's fault, but we steered this into a uh, a movie podcast. <laughs> well the I'll world needs the more of those yeah. <laughs> the world needs more podcasts can we do uh sitting down and reviewing movies yeah, can we do a game There's not nearly enough it's like 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 doug loves movies work some games in i would like to do one that's like uh getting doug with high i think that's the one i would be really yeah. interested in <laughs> that's good and i it's been yeah. a while i used to listen to all of benson's podcasts those were great but i i did like uh did like the movies uh, yeah. Shout out Doug like, Benson. Yeah. 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 Shout out you'll... Nicholas Cage. Throwback showed out shout out to a little yeah. bit ago in the interview. Yeah. Hopefully they'll they'll both get on get on this and get into tired all the time. I mean, they're bound to find it. I don't know how many podcasts there are out there. So oh, so, you know, like we're like twenty. Like twenty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, anytime a new podcast like like pretty much gets minted you're already in like the top 100 of apple yeah. podcasts it's yeah you know, it's a really it's a dry yeah, market gonna... sorry i was thinking about... I, I was thinking of other good movies now i'm still this well yeah i mean we had some good big... um <clears throat> robert eggers robert eggers is putting out great shit like uh like the fucking lighthouse oh, yeah, you got the fucking something. Yeah, the Northman. I'm fucking. I'm fucking hyped. I'm fucking hyped to see Bjork on screen uh, again. Oh, I didn't know. Like, she's actually in it. Nice. Yeah, she is it. She and obviously she's the seeress. That makes sense. Because that that's what he is in real life. She. Cause, yeah, exactly. She. She like. Uh, she's like a uh, like like the like Delphi Oracle, except she's not getting high on gas. She's just getting high on like. A very like uh, a cultured upbringing and and like like here's what happens if you nurture the talents of a musical prodigy to like their fullest extent and so that yeah in that sense yeah yeah uh, you know lighthouse classic yeah movie the best movie about guys (laughs) being dudes together and like just hanging out big no girls allowed sign on that lighthouse. I would like to see the trailer reworked with different sounds and like music now to make it seem like that's what the movie's going to be about. I know it can be done, especially by people. Yeah, I mean, like a light, all the time, light buddy <laughs> comedy kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I mean, dude, we've like always a, been yeah. we've been open towards soundtracking. Just uh, the opportunity hasn't presented itself quite yet. Yeah, you you replace the the repeat. Being a foghorn blast with like I don't know, Doobie Brothers or something. <laughs> yeah, no, like cut it, like make it look like the trailer for old school. Right. <laughs> get a oh, get a fucking narration over that trailer. They never fucking do that anymore. You know, like I, I guess it's that like the guy, the movie guy who did the narrations for all the shit in like the eighties and nineties. I guess he probably like died or, or something. In a world or, guy retired. in a world. Yeah, in a world, and they're pulling out all the stops, and then you know, Willem Dafoe's crawling like a pig <laughs> on the ground. <laughs> you know what? I I saw that in the theater, and there was a couple in front of uh, me and my buddy who got up at that point and walked out, and I was like, <laughs> "You got this far, you got all, all the way through this, and that was the thing that was too much was like him making uh, Dafoe crawl like a dog 
in the like the last yeah. ten minutes in the movie. Wait, did we actually reference? Plot. Yeah, like Willem Dafoe. Do we reference what? Lighthouse, or we all just like agreed that we had seen it all together? Yeah, yeah we are. Seeing, well, yeah, I mean, every, Paul, have you seen yeah. Lighthouse? Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, there we go. And listener, if you have not seen it, uh, stop this right now and then watch it and then come back to the podcast immediately after. Well, I think we're already done through through the spoilers. Oh, yeah, shit. I would like to acknowledge the callback that I think this led off with Brian saying there aren't any good movies, but we've thoroughly driven his point to the fucking ground. (laughs) Yeah. Damn. How many awards? Paul Paul said it first, and I was agreeing. Oh man. Okay. Man. But I, yeah. I know it was my There is fault. a small number of very good movies that are out there. All right. And an ocean of crap. How many awards have you guys been nominated for? How many awards have you guys won? Oh. Um I think I know this. We got that There's two uh last year. Well, we got we and, got one for a video. Yeah, song and artist. We got a we video. Got a, <clears throat> By last year, he means in the before time. Right, 2019, I believe. Right? The last yeah. the last two years are just a complete uh, walk. But we don't count that. Yeah. Just 2019 and pause. Save game. Uh, Pretty much. But yeah, yeah, 20, we got nominated for two whammies in 2019. We did not win, uh, but we did get uh, for the Bone Dry video. Uh, congratulations, Ed, for I forget who that was through. But there was a uh, video. Was the Harmony Awards, which yeah. I was not able to attend. And I only found out maybe six months later when I was just sitting on my couch. I was like, I wonder who won that. And then I, I looked it up and I was like, oh, I won that. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And I, we were nominated or we were in the voting for like a f- f- four, uh, but we are just nominated for. Like best rock and uh, best rock song and best uh, uh, rock band. Yeah, it's, yeah, hard rock category. Right, so hard rock. Yeah, we're hard rock. So even there, we were in a different category in 2019. So even there, it just sort of, I don't know how that happens. Somebody says oh, it goes because those buckets are kind of silly. It's like we're sort of using the same categories from like the Billboard Awards in 1988, still and trying to like apply modern music to it got hard rock yes. be metal so i Do feel you like guys... we might have won another award in there somewhere but i don't really i don't i don't keep track of it too much like i know that we won the harmony award because i thought that was funny are they like physical awards do they send you trophies i mean they didn't even send me an email for the harmony awards so <laughs> i definitely didn't get a trophy yeah. I didn't look it up myself. I send out trophies. Um, I give out two awards every year, and I send out trophies so that, like, you know, you really won at least something. It might be like a shitty trophy, but you still get one. Um, um so I won uh, two two whammies with Team Mortgage, and we got like physical trophies for that. Um, so I guess if we do take it this year, um, we'll we'll get some. But, uh, you know, remains to be seen. I'm not going to be able to physically attend the show again because um, we're going to be, be probably in North Carolina playing Spaz Fest, which I guess is the unofficial announcement. Depends on, like, when this, uh, when this drops. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yes, and we're very excited today. And we've, we've all, every single time we've been to North Carolina, it's been fun. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, our uh, favorite place. Some something about North Carolina. Maybe it's the food. It's close, and it's not Pennsylvania. Mm-hmm. Yeah, or Delaware. Do you guys still have any of those uh, tired all the time M and M's left in those little bottles? Oh, so those are Billy coming. Might. Yeah, they're coming from Flag uh, Flag Day recordings so i'm sure he probably has some um they are not for consumption anymore uh so they're 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 there but they come with a big warning label it says there i think they're like three four years old now m&m so 
uh, collectors. I mean, might did have they become them. hard? I've, I've eaten old candy before. I would I'm not eat proud them. of it. I don't think it I, I don't eat candy, so yeah, I don't. A... I don't give a shit. I would eat them. Well, there was an issue initially. It's like, great, we got them. This is a cool gimmick. Um, Billy, came, I think he came up with it, right? Billy Pizarro from Flag Day who put out. Yep. Uh, be well, and it was just a brilliant idea. Like the like actual, we couldn't get too close. Like use real prescription bottles because we didn't want to get busted for drug trafficking. But uh, um, yeah, you got them, and then it was like summer, and we we're like, okay, cool, we'll ship these out. Not thinking about maybe that's not the best idea. Shipping pack in hundred degree heat, you know, in like August to people and then you, they just get like a I guess by then it's like a hardened like cylinder of goo yep. and then, then we said okay we're, we'll um, we'll ship the, the pill bottles when it gets colder but I wouldn't want to they, had, they, look cool, they look cool I wouldn't want to eat them I just want to have them who's going to win the Super Bowl today? So they are probably still available if someone's looking for them oh, the, the uh, owl is today I think uh, Pepsi. Pepsi's looking <laughs> good this year. Um, yeah. I think uh, Doritos what? plays will probably do well. Yeah. Uh, who's, um, who's doing holograms of dead musicians? I'm Paul Goon. Yep. They are tired all the time. That was 13 minutes. <laughs>